On this evening's Nationwide, it was at the forefront of rural electrification and the making of a modern Ireland. The ESB's power station at Ardna Crusher in County Clare is celebrating a special birthday. We visit the plant which literally brought light and electric power to thousands of homes. We take a trip along the Shannon and see the ESB's boat lift in action. And we travel to County Leitrim to see a major geological survey underway. You're very welcome to the programme. This evening we're coming to you from the Shannon region to mark a very special birthday. This year is the 85th anniversary of the establishment of the ESB and to mark the occasion the Taoiseach Kenta Kenny is coming here to the Ardna Crusher power station tomorrow afternoon. Ardna Crusher was the ESB's first power station and when built the 86 megawatt plant was adequate to meet the electricity needs of the entire country. Mary Malone has been looking back at the history of this most iconic power station. Donald Ryan began working here at Ardna Crusher in 1947, less than 20 years after the hydroelectric station was built. Today, Donald is back to visit the ESB power plant where he spent almost half a century of his working life. Hello, Donald. Welcome back to Ireland, Russia. It's a while since we've seen you. In the aftermath of the Civil War, Ireland in the early 1920s was a fledgling state bypassed by the Industrial Revolution and beset by poverty. There was a gaping need for power to facilitate progress. A young engineer, Tom McLaughlin, brought home a hugely ambitious proposal from his employers, Siemens Schuchert in Germany, to harness the power of the Shannon at Ardna Crusher and establish a national distribution network to replace the hundreds of small local power stations then in existence. It was very cheap power, even in those days. And we found we could deliver it in the towns and villages uh, cheaper than they themselves could generate electricity by any other means. The new Minister for Industry and Commerce, Patrick McGilligan, encountered some opposition because of the cost of the project, over £5 million of the entire annual state budget of £25 million. Nevertheless, the government did give the go-ahead in 1925. And that was a difficult point then I reached because here I was with approval from the parliament to develop this scheme. <coughs> Expenditure then based on two five million pounds on. And the question was how was it going, how was it going to be done? In August 1925, the contracts were signed and work was set to commence on this huge project which had an immediate impact on Ireland's social, economic and industrial development. It became known as the um, the eighth wonder of the world once it started. For the Germans, it was tremendously important um, as a showcase, um, also uh, to re-establish their name as a worldwide contractor as well. But the fact that you had uh, so many Germans here, uh, it was a terrific boost for the local economy of a thousand Germans practically. And then you have 4,000 Irish navvies uh, as well. But the scheme, which was to become the model for large-scale electrification projects worldwide, was fraught with difficulties, including many industrial injuries and deaths. The biggest problem for the Germans uh, was getting suitable labour, skilled labour, because the people coming were coming from exchanges and coming from farms and coming from towns and cities, but they had no experience, say, for example, of driving trains uh, and working on huge sites where safety was such a factor. Um, there were some dreadful accidents here because of their inexperience, and the Germans railed against that. The ESB was set up in 1927 and amazingly, despite its problems, the project came in on time and within budget and generated enough electricity to power the entire country's needs for some years. There was a great atmosphere and was, as I said there were some, um, some great characters and we had about uh, three buses, two or three buses 
full coming from Limerick during the overhauls, and the workers would get uh, an hour and a quarter for to facilitate going to Limerick for to have their dinner. The hours were very sociable, except for the shift workers. You had three different uh, areas of shift. You had the uh, control room and the machine floor and the turbine gallery. Uh, but otherwise, the, the hours were perfect. When you're in the dark and you want to see, you need a... Electricity, electricity. The power station has been upgraded over the years, but the essential structure generating electricity remains that which was built and commissioned in the 1920s. We're standing right here now on top of Arden Crusher Dam. It's a 30 metre high dam. And looking back upstream, uh, we're looking at the Headrace Canal, which feeds into the dam. The Headrace Canal is 12 and a half kilometres long, and it connects Parteen Weir to Arden Crusher Dam. The purpose of building the Headrace Canal was to concentrate the 30 metre fall that existed between Loch Derg and the estuary in Limerick uh, in one place. We're standing here at the downstream side of the dam now, but still at, on the top of the dam. And you can, you can look um, down there and you, you can get a feel and an appreciation for the fall we have. Looking down there, water level is at sea level. There are four pipes there feeding the four um, turbines, generators. We call them penstocks. Each one of those um, takes 100 tonnes of water per second. The dam incorporated um, a navigation lock in two stages, um, which raises boats 30 metres from the downstream side up to the upstream side. Um, and obviously boats can go down as well. All the hydroelectric stations in Ireland are now controlled from Wicklow. But water flow management is still an essential part of what they do here in Ardner Crusha. Water management function is, 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 very, is very important in, in that we control the level of Loch Derg. So we manage uh, the, the uh, inflow to Loch Derg. We look at the inflow. So every day we look at rainfalls, we look at forecasts, and uh, we decide then how much power we must produce in order to keep the level of Loch Derg steady. Now also, of course, in, in, in time of a flood, we can take 400 tonnes per second down through the station here. But in, in a flood, we had a flood in 2009 where there was 900 tonnes per second coming into Loch Derg. Uh, if we didn't have Arna Crusher, the whole lot would have to go down the old river. The conservation hatchery in nearby Parteen was set up more than half a century ago to rear and release fish stocks to offset the effects of the scheme on the local fish population. The reason for that is ESB have turbine sets where we generate electricity from our hydroelectric station in Ardna uh, and that has a negative effect on fish. Fish are killed as they go through those turbines. There's also a, slow, a slowing up of the migration of adult fish as they come upstream. The net benefit as such is that we release fish into the catchment to compensate for the negative effects of hydro generation. Although it now only provides a small fraction of the country's energy needs, Arda Crusha's sustainability is still its trump card. Here at Arda Crusha, we can produce 92 megawatts of electricity, which is about as much as would be required to power the houses, say, in a town the size of Slido. Um, so it is a green energy, it's renewable, although it might only be 2% of what Ireland needs in total, it's still very viable, it will be here into the future. A dam is a very long-standing structure, so we will have a future here, and it's part of ESB's sustainability uh, programme to be carbon neutral by 2035, to promote wind and hydro stations like Ardner Crusher here. The, the general recognition, say for example, there some time ago the uh, American Society of Civil Engineers uh, conferred a landmark award on Arden Crusher, which puts it in the same league as the Eiffel Tower, the Fourth Bridge uh, and the Panama Canal. It was an extraordinary achievement and it's still uh, a national monument and a monument to great courage and enterprise and uh, vision. And a reminder that the Taoiseach will be honouring this special year for the ESB when he visits Ardna Crusher tomorrow. Of course, in many ways, Ardna Crusher became a flagship power station for the ESB, symbolising a modern Ireland by producing electricity for past and future generations. <laughs>